Today is March 30th. It is the fifth day of the feast. And it is the fourth day in the count to Pentecost. And it is the Sabbath day. And we left off talking about the spiritual body of Christ and how in the end, before the return of Yeshua, it would take a generation for this spiritual body to come to fruition. There would be trying, trial and testing of God's people to see who will follow him who will prevail with him who will seek him with all their heart to understand his commandments his precepts his judgments God brought about a captivity in the end on all his people no one is immune from it it's over the whole earth and his people must prevail with him that is his purpose to bring about fruit in his people to bring about the victory over the beast And I want to start in Psalm 73 today. Truly Jehovah is good to Israel, even to such as are of our, our clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well near slipped, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasses them about as a chain, and violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than their heart could wish. They are corrupt, and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase riches. Truly I cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of your children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Till I went into the sanctuary of Jehovah, then understood I their end. Surely you did set them in slippery places. You cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one wakes, so, O oh Lord, when you wake, you will despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before you. Nevertheless, I'm continually with you. You've held me by my right hand. You shall guide me with your counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none on earth that I desire beside you. 
My flesh and my heart fails, but God is the, is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For see, they that are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all them that go a-whoring from you. It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in Jehovah, that I might declare all your works. Psalm 73. We've been going over the spiritual body of Christ prophecies in the book of Revelation chapter 11 about God's people the first fruits in the kingdom and how this started at Pentecost after Christ's death and resurrection that Pentecost that came the church started the spiritual body The Holy Spirit was given to God's people, the followers of Yeshua, who keep God's commandments and have the testimony of Yeshua. And that started a process, as we read in Revelation 11, this measuring of the temple, this beginning of the temple of God. Those of Yeshua who have his Holy Spirit dwelling in, the Spirit of Jehovah, are the temple, and they are to be transformed at his second coming into New Jerusalem. It all starts here with a calling. The church started long ago, the spiritual body of Christ, and there was witness in that early church for 1260 years 1260 years and it says in Revelation chapter 11 verse 7 and when they had finished their testimony now, we have to understand, for a 1260-year period, a year for a day in this prophecy, we see that the early church was powerful for a long time, for a very long time, and most of the number of 144,000 was fulfilled in that time. Not all of it though, not all of it, most of it. Only God knows that that was a long time for the early church to have power, God's spirit, and it says they finished their testimony after 1260 days or 1260 years. And it says the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So what does this mean? It's not a physical death. The church died out after that time because of deception, because of this beast. The testimony that God gave for that time period, a certain amount of time, ended. That's all we need to understand. In God's good time, he gave time for a fulfillment of people being called and in that time coming into the body of Christ and overcoming with the Spirit of God and more and more coming into the body in that in those days and then it was finished for that time and the beast came 
The beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. When we look at the beginning, right at Pentecost, we see Christ came, he was fulfilled, the Passover, That was the, the, the fulfillment that year, that very special Passover that Christ said we went over last year. He desired his entire life that moment. He desired it because he knew that's what he was here for. That's what he was born to do. And he kept the Passover his entire life. But that year finally came in his life and he would fulfill the meaning of Passover for all time and become our high priest. Now, we go on to Pentecost and the start of the church. We don't know the exact year as far as Christ's death. Around 28 AD probably, or give or take a year. You know, he was born a few years BC, five, four, five, six years before that, we don't know exactly. But when we look at his ministry and how he was in the world that time, for that amount of time, then the church would come for 1260 years from the day of Pentecost onward. And then we see the prophecy that would be finished. So when we look at around 28 AD, when we add 1260 to that, and then we add 666 to that, another 666 years, we add, we add that together, and you end up in 1954. 1954. By this time, 666 would be fully over the entire world. Every nation, this would be over. Everybody born would be under this. Even going back before 1954. But 666 is fully established in the last generation. And it would be in this generation that Yeshua would bring his people out of this. the Passover, the true Passover would save his people in this last generation. We've gone over the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is breaking Jehovah's commandments. It is lawlessness. This is over this lawlessness is over the whole earth. It has been in every religion. Now, the pagan religions, obviously, but Christianity, what is called Christianity, isn't really Christianity. It's still in Babylon, and it has been for a long time, because all these churches are adulterers, spiritual adulterers, 
they keep the pagan times Christmas, Easter, all the other pagan times. They do not keep God's Sabbaths. They do not know the gospel of the kingdom. They do not understand any of that. And God classifies all of that as Babylon, mystery Babylon, part of Babylon. Now this end time beast, this would be over God's people as well in the end. In the church that people thought was keeping his commandments from the very beginning, this would also be over the saints. for a time right up until the end Revelation chapter 13 I stood on the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns and on his heads the name of blasphemy verse 3 and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed this wound is healed in the last generation this is what it comes to. The deadly wound is healed. This was the pre-flood spirit come around again. God destroyed that world, destroyed the spirit of that world, and it comes again in the end and we see that throughout this prophecy and it says all the world wondered after the beast and they worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast and they worshiped the beast saying who is like to the beast who is able to make war with him well it is the people who overcome with God with Yeshua and keep the commandments and know the truth that make war with the beast that overcome the beast But this was ordained by God that his people would be given into this, would be overcome by this. Verse 6, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle we are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit we are the dwelling place of Jehovah if we're keeping his commandments but there's abomination that's what it is talking about in the end you must recognize where these commandments are being broken and repent this is the spiritual war that we fight and them that dwell in heaven 
and it was given him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. We understand the saints are the people who have the commandments of God. But they were overcome by this beast. How is that? As we went over, these things from the beginning of this generation were never made perfect until the end. There was sin in the body. That's why God destroyed the worldwide church of God and scattered it and shattered it to see who would prevail, who would come through this. Because the worldwide church of God under Herbert W. Armstrong, these people thought they had it all. They were rich and increased with goods. They had the Laodicean spirit. And they were all spewed out. Because they, that spirit is wretched and miserable and poor spiritually and blind and naked. Not having the white robes on yet. Not having the robe of righteousness on. But things had to be brought low. The physical body needed to be destroyed. So the spiritual body, who would prevail? Who will keep going with God? Not following man. Man who breaks the commandments. But following Jehovah by his spirit. That's what this is all about here in Revelation chapter 13. The beast. The carnal mind. That is not subject to the law. Neither indeed can be. Who will break that and follow God and understand? Again, in the book of Daniel, the wise will understand. The wicked will not understand. Many will be tried and made white. But the wicked will do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. So those who follow through, who diligently seek God and keep his commandments, they will have good things in store. They will come out of this mark of the beast, 666. This mark has been over the whole world and is over the whole world, save those people that are freed by Yeshua. Now, it says here, was given to him to make war with the saints and overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell on the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have ear, let him hear. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. So this beast, this lawless beast in the body, of Christ, the physical body that that's desolate of God's Holy Spirit, that's breaking the law, that's using the sword, the word of God, and adding to it or taking away from it or not understanding it and teaching others and lying, leading people into captivity. Those people go into captivity themselves sin is a captivity sin is a bondage and they are blind they are blind guides and many follow them and they kill with the sword we want to make alive with the sword here these people are the sword comes back on them but we want to make alive by telling the truth 
with the Word of God and handling it properly. But this is over God's people. In the end, for the entire 70 years, we must be freed by Yeshua, the true Passover, in this time. And for us, we are. And we are thankful. We are blessed. Those who understand what I'm saying, those who have eyes to see and ears to hear the things that I'm talking about, these things are hard to express, but it all has to do with keeping his law. It's very simple at the end of the day. We have the law. We have the testimony of Yeshua. But people are, are right up until the end. There's great desolation out there. You don't have to look far. It's all around you. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. Like a lamb. And he spoke as a dragon. Lies. The devil is a liar. The dragon. There's no truth in him. What did we read yesterday? What did we read? Synagogue of Satan. Those who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Synagogue of Satan, they're called. What does that mean? What did that mean for the Worldwide Church of Herbert W. Armstrong in his day. Well, we, we Herbert W. Armstrong again. He he didn't know a lot of things, and people idolized him, and that was just the beginning. You have to realize Matthew twenty four. For many shall come in my name, verse five, saying, "I am Christ," and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Oh boy. <laughs> the Worldwide Church of God under Herbert W. Armstrong. That's all it was about. That's the, the, their prophecy, anyway. Their false prophecy. World War III. Getting ready for World War III. Physical war. Not the spiritual war. They already, according, they won that already. They were just worried about warning the world about World War III, trying to get more people to join the church. Those things were wrong. They didn't have understanding that I'm telling you today about the beast and the carnal mind and breaking the commandments and how it's all about deception in these chapters, if you notice. Being deceived it has nothing to do with physical war. To spiritual war Christ says right here in the text you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you be not troubled look at this generation look at all what calls itself Christian they, they, they have all these physical prophecies about war they don't understand they don't understand. Like I said, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Christ said it will be like the days of Noah. They did not know until the flood came and took them all away. They don't understand. They have these elaborate false prophecies and forget about the mark of the beast. Oh, when the mark of the beast comes, they're going to know it. No. No. They don't know it. They don't know it. And all of, all of what is called Christian in this world has that mark. Because they break the commandments. I don't realize how serious this, this really is for people's lives. The, the Christianity of this world is false. It's going down the tubes in this time. You better believe it. It's part of Babylon. And this prophecy about the beast, 
The beast destroys Babylon in the end. Destroys it. Because God puts it in the mind. In their mind to do that. To bring about great lies in this last generation. And look at the state of religion today. It's all garbage. It's all garbage. It's laughable, really. It wasn't so utterly pathetic and insane. It's crazy. Because they don't keep the law. They don't know they don't know Christ. And in the end, Christ will say, I never knew you. You don't want to follow him. That's what happens. Very serious. It's a very serious thing. And there's going to be a lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth because people aren't taking it seriously. They don't take it seriously. And it comes out of nowhere for them in their life. And we're at the time now, the world is godless. They've been shown images and lies and they don't even know the creation they are, they're in, the world they're in, the earth they stand on, the heavens above them have been turned upside down. That's all in God's commandments, too. The very creation. It's written in the Sabbath commandment. For in six days the Lord created the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. Everything in the heavens above, everything in the earth beneath, everything in the sea in six days. And the rest of the seventh day. Did the Worldwide Church of God believe that? Under Herbert W. Armstrong? Herbert W. Armstrong was deceived. Herbert W. Armstrong was on Mars with uh, Ron Lightyear. These people don't know what end is up in this time. And their church is desolate of God's Holy Spirit. All of them. All of them. Except those who through Yeshua conquer and overcome and keep the commandments and are saved. To come out of that mark have the mark of God on them, the seal of God, which we read about on Passover on the first day. That's the sign on his people, the true Passover. That's the sign. Revelation 13. Verse 12, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Lying signs and wonders throughout this entire generation. People have been so brainwashed by television and movies and their wonderful education system of this world. Well, what does God say? You're a friend of this world, you're his enemy. You think the education system of this world is teaching you the truth? Better think again. Better think again. When you look a little deeper into these things, which plenty of examples on the site, who started? Who started this society? Who built up this society we live in today? Same people who built this country in the very beginning. What were they involved in? What are they involved in? The occult. They eat her flesh. They feed off mystery Babylon as well. They keep the ancient ways of Babylon. 
They bring the world into a great deception. Those things never ended. People that run this world, this United Nations, end time, one world government, they're all in the occult. They're Luciferians. Revelation chapter 16 says they're deceived by devils by unclean spirits. That's exactly what they meddle with, these people. They have power on the earth. They've been given power by the devil to rule this world. You're going to believe in their education? You're going to believe they landed on the moon? You're going to believe in all the wars that they cause? Ah, uh, the things this this generation has been lied to about, and people just never can catch on. They never get it. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Images. False images. What about the second commandment? What about the second commandment? Surely we're we're spinning. <laughs> It's like a globe. You learn that in school. They don't lie to you there. They don't. They, they, they know the world we live in. They've been to space. <laughs> I don't know why I go on about these things. It's not going to be much longer. But the people of this earth, it's over now. Strong delusion has come. Strong delusion has come on this earth. And that those who don't follow God, judgment comes. They don't love the truth. God sends it. Strong delusion. It's been on this whole generation. Don't know the creation. They don't know the truth. Now we've come to the end evolutionary worldview completely destroys religion that's what God is doing that's how God is destroying Babylon he's doing it with this worldwide space religion <laughs> uh, it's almost done thank God And he deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. And power was given, power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Zechariah chapter 11. Verse 1. Open your doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour your cedars. Howl, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen, because the mighty are spoiled. Howl, O you oaks of Bashan, for the forest. Of the vintage has come down. There's a voice in the howling of the howling of the shepherds for the glory is spoiled. A voice of the roaring of young lions for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus said Jehovah my God, feed the flock of the slaughter whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be Jehovah, for I am rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, says Jehovah. But see, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand, and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. 
and I will feed the flock of the slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took to me two staves, the one I called beauty and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. My soul loathed, loathed them, and their soul abhorred me. Then said I, I will not feed you. That that dies, let it die. And that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. What does this mean for people? And I took to my staff, took my staff even beauty and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant which I had made with all the people, and it was broken in that day. And so the poor of the flock that waited on me knew that it was the word of Jehovah. And I said to them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And Jehovah said to me, Cast it to the potter a goodly price that I was priced out of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of Jehovah. And I cut asunder my other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And Jehovah said to me, Take you yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd, for see I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that is broken, nor feed that stands still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaves the flock desolate, leaves the flock. The sword shall be on his arm, and on his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. This is what we see in this end time. Revelation 13. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man. His number is six hundred three score and six. The idle shepherd. There are many, many, many. The world is filled with them. And this has been over God's people for a generation. You have to come out of that by your Passover, by Yeshua, the only way. The mark of the beast isn't about something coming. It's been over this generation the entire time. Freed from it in the end. you endorse to the end the same shall be saved Daniel 9 Daniel chapter 9 Speaking of the captivity of the whole tribe of Judah in Babylon, people need to understand, and this has come in the last generation spiritually. And it's God who delivers delivers us out of this if we obey Him.
Verse 5, we have sinned and done wrong. We have acted wickedly and rebelled. We have turned away from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, leaders, and fathers, and to all the people of the land. To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness. But this day we are covered with shame, the men of Judah, the people of Jerusalem, and all Israel, near and far, and all the countries to which you've driven us, because of our unfaithfulness to you. O Lord, we are covered with shame, our kings, our leaders, and our fathers, because we've sinned against you. To the Lord our God belongs compassion and forgiveness, even though we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of Jehovah our God to walk in his laws. We set before he set before us though his through his servants the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey your voice. So the oath and the curse written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been poured out on us because we've sinned against you. You have carried out the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us great disaster and great disaster is coming on all false churches in this time great disaster for under all of heaven Nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not sought the favor of Jehovah our God by turning from our iniquity and giving attention to the truth. Therefore, Jehovah has kept the calamity in store and brought it upon us. Jehovah is righteous in all he does, yet we have not obeyed his voice. Now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and who had, had made yourself a name renowned to this day, we have sinned. We have acted wickedly. O Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, I pray your anger and wrath may turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of our sins and our iniquity of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people are our reproach to all around us. So now, O God, hear the prayer and the petition of your servant. For your sake, O Lord, cause your face to shine upon your desolate sanctuary. Incline your ear, O my God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. But we are not present, presenting our petition before you because of our righteous acts, but because of your great compassion. O oh Lord, listen. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hear and act for your sake, O oh my God, and do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. spiritual Jerusalem today God's people again started out at the beginning of this generation just the beginning have to go through many things false prophets false teachers who will triumph with God They shall deliver you up to be afflicted, Matthew 24. They shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Because iniquity shall abound. Iniquity, sin, shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and the, and the end shall come. 
You therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whoever reads, let him understand. Zechariah 11. Woe to the idle shepherd. Leaves the flock. Sword shall be on his arm and on his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up. His right eye shall be utterly darkened. It's the beast in the church over God's people. For an entire generation who will stand who can make war with the beast I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off neither shall seek the young one nor heal that is broken nor feed that stands still but shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces the beast wolf, a wolf in sheep's clothing, a blind wolf, a ravenous wolf. Amazing. All these prophecies, they've all come to pass. They've all come to pass. Who sees it? Who understands? Well, again, this prophecy of the 70 weeks the Feast of Weeks, 70 sets of seven. This last generation has to overcome the mark of the beast by keeping the commandments of God. We have the truth. We are blessed you can hear follow the truth Jehovah's appointed times talking about them for eight years this is the feast this year and what are people gonna do next month well we see that Daniel chapter 9 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the middle of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation that is, that is determined is poured on the desolate after this 69 week period comes the last week and in this last week that's the end. This last set of seven comes the end. There will be many people that are desolate in that time. Those who return, those who conquer with God, there is great reward. Coming to the last, the last set of seven soon. The last set of weeks. I believe that. And 
people who should be prepared. Matthew 5. Verse 27, you have heard that it was said of them of old time that you should not commit, commit adultery, but I say to you that whoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye offend, pluck it out and cast it from you. So we can understand the physical, what's being said here, but do we understand the the spiritual, about the body. Your right eye, what did we just read? In Zechariah. For it is profitable, profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not that your whole body should be cast into Gehenna. And if your right hand offend, cut it off. The mark of the beast. The breaking of God's commandments. The right hand. Who are you following? What did, we, what did we read on Passover? About God's salvation. About His hand. About the true Passover. Your right hand offend, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is profitable for you that one of your members should perish and not the whole body should be cast into Gehenna. understand these things. We've been talking about them now for eight years. The last decade of the 70 comes the truth. The truth comes in fullness. All prophecy is revealed. All of it. The beast that changes times and laws. In this time, the entire creation of God is not understood. Every bit of what God created is being turned upside down. Who sees it? I do. I know the truth. Do you see it? Do you see how that's in the law of God? You see what this means for you in the end. And you put it all together. I tell you, the wise will understand. Those who keep God's commandments will understand, but the wicked will not understand. And in the end, the joke is on them. They don't know what end is up. They've been under strong delusion. Wrong. We'll finish today Psalm 144. Blessed be Jehovah my strength, which teaches my hands to war, and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust who subdues my people under me. Jehovah, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you make account of him? Man is like vanity. His days are as a shadow that passes away. Bow your heavens, O Lord. Come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and destroy them. Send your hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters. 
from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaks vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood I will sing a new song to you O God on a psaltery an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises to you it is he that gives salvation to kings who delivers David his servant from the hurtful sword rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaks vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth that our daughters may be as the cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace that our garners may be full affording all manner of store that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in the streets that our oxen may be strong to labor and that there be no breaking in or going out that there be no complaining in our streets happy is the people that is in such a case yes happy is the people whose god is jehovah